Today we're taking a look at these NFL matches, which are happening on Sunday, November 27, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified, as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. So make sure to watch our videos till the end, so you don't miss any of our picks. Cleveland Browns vs Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Browns might have the advantage of being the home team, but the Buccaneers are surging and with confidence building, shouldn't have any issues coming away with a win in this one. The Buccaneers have had issues running the ball this season, but with the depth of their wide receiver room, as well as having Brady a quarterback, they will be able to carve up Cleveland's injury-riddled secondary in this one. The Browns will be too reliant on the ground game in this one, but with their own offensive line's woes, Tampa Bay's pass rush will be too much for them to overcome. Additionally, according to Covers.com, Tampa Bay is 3-0 to 1 at TS in their last four games in November, while they also are 4-1 at TS in the last five meetings between these two teams. Tampa Bay minus three points. The over-under number is a fairly easy one to see this week, with the trends pointing to over. Besides trends, we know that Tampa Bay has a dynamic offense capable of stacking up the points. They also can limit points, but expect a little rustiness on the Bucks' defensive secondary coming back from a bye week, as is usually the case in such long layoffs. The trends are over even for the Browns. Over is 4-0 to 1 in their last five home games. Watch for the offense to rally on the Browns' side in what will likely be Brissett's last game as starter. Go over for the win. New York Jets vs Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears are looking to end a four-game losing streak. The last three defeats have been narrow. They lost by three points to the Dolphins, one against the Lions, and last week Chicago was labeled as a 2.5-point dog in a 27-24 road loss to the Falcons. The Bears' last win occurred on October 24 in a surprising blowout road win against the Patriots. The Bears have only covered the spread in two of their six road games. Justin Fields continues to produce. The mobile QB isn't putting up big numbers in the air, reaching 200 passing yards just once all season, but is dangerous on the ground. Fields has collected 1642 passing yards along with a 13-8 TD to int ratio, and has added 833 rushing yards. Unfortunately, he sustained a shoulder injury and has been limited in practice. He is considered doubtful. If Fields doesn't play it will be Trevor Simeon under center. The veteran was the starter for a few seasons in Denver earlier in his career. Khalil Herbert did not play last week as he deals with a hip injury and unfortunately has landed on the IR. David Montgomery will see a majority of the carries. The 25-year-old RB has 501 rushing yards. Darnell Mooney only recorded 29 receiving yards last week. The 25-year-old WR leads the squad with 493 receiving yards. The Chicago offense has definitely been a bright spot in the slide, hosting at least 29 points in three out of their last four games. The New York Jets entered this one as a loser of two out of their last three games. They are still in good shape, just one game out of first place in the AFC East. New York stunned the Bills with a 2017 win on November 6, but followed with a 10-3 road loss against the Patriots last week, in a clash that had New York labeled as 3.5-point dogs. The Jets are one of the most improved squads in the NFL this season and have a legit chance to make the playoffs. They have covered in two of five home games. Zach Wilson only connected on 40% of his passes for 77 yards last week. The 23-year-old QB hasn't been effective in his seven games played, recording a total of 1279 passing yards and a 4-5 TD to int ratio. H.C. Robert Sala has stated Wilson will not play due to his struggles. Mike White will get the start. White was reasonably productive last season, recording 953 passing yards in five games, but logged a 5-8 TD to int ratio. 
Jets rushing leader Brees Hall was placed on the IR last week, which is a big loss. The young RB has 463 yards. Michael Carter will receive most of the carries. The 23-year-old RB only had 19 rushing yards last week and has accrued 349 yards on 3.8 yards per carry on the year. The Chicago Bears are not winning games. They have been competitive recently but dropped a home decision against the Lions, followed by a road loss against the Falcons. The Jets have won five out of their last seven games. They have several notable wins, defeating the Packers, Broncos, and Bills. Furthermore, the Bears' defense is landing them in trouble. The Bears' rush defense is pegged 29th in the NFL, and this is key when considering the Jets rushed for 174 yards against the Bills a few weeks ago. I especially like the Jets to cover this small spread at home because of their outstanding defense. They limited the Packers to 10 points, the Bills to 17 earlier this month, and most recently, the Pats to 10 points last week. Justin Fields is doubtful with a shoulder injury, and Chicago relies heavily on the running game. This is not ideal for Chicago when considering the Jets' best attribute is the rush defense which is holding foes to 109.7 rushing yards per game. New York Jets minus 6 points. Tennessee Titans vs Cincinnati Bengals. The Cincinnati Bengals are currently in second place in the AFC North as they trail the Baltimore Ravens by one game. They are also 3-3 on the road this season. On offense, the Bengals are scoring 26.5 points per game and they are averaging 366.4 yards. This is the third most points scored per contest and the seventh most yards recorded per game. Joe Burrow will start at quarterback as he has thrown for 22 touchdowns this season and only eight interceptions. Cincinnati is also throwing for 271.3 yards per game, which is the fourth most in the NFL. Burrow will look to get the ball to T. Higgins in this one, as he has recorded 712 receiving yards and three touchdowns this season. Jammer Chase could make his return from injury in this game as well, as he is one of Burrow's favorite targets. The Bengals are also running for 95.1 yards per game, which is the 28th most in the league. Joe Mixon is the lead back for Cincinnati, as he has recorded 605 rushing yards and six touchdowns this season. But he is out with a concussion. Samahe Perrine will take his place if he can't start. Perrine finished last week's game with three receiving touchdowns. The Tennessee Titans are currently in first place in the AFC South as they have a three-game lead over the second-place Indianapolis Colts. On offense, they are scoring 19.3 points per game and averaging 294.3 total yards. This is the 24th most points scored per game and the fourth least amount of yards. They have continued to lean on their rushing attack as they have struggled to move the ball through the air at times this season. They are currently throwing for 165.4 yards per game, which is the 30th most in the league. Ryan Tanhill will get the start at quarterback in this one, as he has thrown for 10 touchdowns this season and 4 interceptions. He will look to get the ball to Robert Woods, as he currently leads the team with 335 receiving yards and 1 touchdown. The Titans are also rushing for 128.9 yards per game, as this is the 11th most rushing yards average per contest. Derrick Henry is the lead back for the Titans, as he has recorded 1,010 yards this season and scored 10 touchdowns. Last week, he finished with 87 yards and a touchdown. He also threw for a touchdown, as he has been doing it all for Tennessee. I will be hammering the Cincinnati Bengals, and I will lay the points, minus two, on the road. I see Joe Burrow and this Bengals offense throwing the ball all over this Tennessee secondary. The Bengals are throwing for the fourth most yards per game, and they are scoring the third most points as a team. They will continue to march the ball down the field and score enough points to cover this spread. Jammer Chase could also return for this game, as this would be a huge boost for this offense. Even if he can't play, the Bengals have enough weapons to stay efficient on the offensive side of the field. The Titans are also surrendering the 30th most passing yards per game, as their secondary has continued to give up big play after big play. They won't be able to slow down this Bengals offense, as Cincinnati will slowly pull away. I see the Titans offense struggling to score enough points to cover this spread. They are averaging the 24th most points scored and the 29th most total yards. The Bengals will be able to make just enough stops to get the win in this game. Everyone is excited about this Titans team after beating the Packers, but Green Bay has stunk all season. It isn't that impressive, as the Bengals will put them back into their place in this game. 
pick the Bengals and lay the points, minus 2. This is a low total for a pair of teams that combined average 45.8 points per game. The over has hit five times in the last seven meetings between these teams and Tennessee. The last five Cincinnati games are 4-0 to 1 in favor of the over, and they have scored 30 or more points four of their last five. The Titans scored 27 in Green Bay last week, so expect them to at least eclipse 20 this week and help us push over. Take the over.